Please be seated. There's been a lot going on over the past few weeks, so you might be forgiven if you didn't catch the theme that has been running through the lessons for the last several weeks, uh, a theme that has been in each week. That theme is signs, the signs of Christ's coming. I don't know if you caught that or not. In that first week, we had the water of John the Baptist's baptism. That second week, we had standing as a sign. Last week, it was sight as a sign. And this week, we have a sign too. It's the unwelcome sign. Now, to clarify, I'm not talking about that invisible sign that some churches put out occasionally. You know, the ones where we, we say everybody's welcome, we, but we really don't want these newcomers messing up the way we do things. But they can pledge. You know this sign, the one that you some, sort of have out in front of you sometimes when you see somebody who's sitting in your pew. So you very politely let them know. Or when there's a new family in there and they've got these kids and they're squirming around and you turn around and you say, you know, there is a nursery. That sort of unwelcome sign. I'm not talking about that. Because that's not really an issue here at St. James. We're pretty good about this stuff. I'm talking about a different kind of an unwelcome sign. A sign that is not welcome. And ironically, that sign is a baby. Or at least what that baby stands for. We can look at this by looking at our Old Testament reading. In Isaiah, you've got this king of the day. The king is, is Ahaz. And he's as so often is the case in scripture, he's got a battle looming, right? And God says to him, ask me for a sign, be it deep as Sheol, the land of the dead, or as high as heaven, and I'll grant it. And what does Ahaz say? He sounds all pious, all faithful. He says, oh, far be it from me to test God. Except, what was he saying there, really? He was saying one of those things we often say. We often say, oh, I'd love a sign from God. But we don't. We don't want the sign from God. Ahaz did not want a sign from God because the problem with a sign from God is you got to follow it. you got to pay attention to it. And the history of paying attention to signs from God means that you have to let go of your own precious and brilliant plans. Ahaz knew what he was going to do. He didn't want God interfering with it, especially when you think about the way God often did that when it came to battles. God was sort of the one who would say, you know what, they've got 10,000, we've got 11,000. That's too many. Why don't we send everybody home? Well, just most everybody. Well, let's, let's try this with 1,000, okay? Trust me. Trust me. It's hard. <coughs> That's a hard thing to do. And more often than not, we're just like, I don't want to do that. I want to be in the driver's seat. I want to be in control. So God says, you don't want to sign? Too bad. You're going to get a sign anyway. And here's the sign. The sign is an infant who is going to be born. And that infant is a sign that they will take over your place, the place of your house in the leadership of this country. There's your sign. And it is very unwelcome indeed. We can't yell at Ahaz too much because we do the same thing. So often we say, show me a sign, God. But we don't want it. We really don't want it. 
We just assumed God sat in the corner or sat in church and left us alone so we could get about our business. God interfering in our lives sometimes is a little too inconvenient, gets in our way. And it's not just a house and it's not just us. You see it in the gospel too. I mean, think of poor Joseph. What a guy Joseph was. But what an unwelcome baby Jesus was for him. Think about what was going on. He's engaged. He discovers that his bride is already pregnant, not with his child. Now today, that would be bad. In those days, that's catastrophic. And he's trying to be the best guy he can be in those circumstances. But then the angel of the Lord speaks to him in a dream and says, this is God's child. You will be the caretaker. Suddenly, now he he is a righteous man and he obeys. But think about what that means for him. Oh, and I should mention that in this dream, the angel then quotes Isaiah quotes the passage, in fact, the sign that Ahaz got from God. A virgin will give birth to a child, and that child will be named Emmanuel. Every Jewish guy knew that story. They knew what that sign of that infant meant, and they knew what happened when Ahaz did not pay attention to God. So the angel, in essence, is saying, oh, listen, here's the sign. You're familiar with it. You know what'll happen. I suggest you pay attention. And he does. He wakes up. He takes Mary for his wife. They do not have marital relations until after Jesus is born. But think about how he felt, or at least must have felt, Put yourself in that situation. He had these dreams, you know, the dream wedding. He had, and, and, and weddings were a big deal then. And every Jewish man at the time had the dream of his own son, you know, taking his place. And all of this is sort of blown up. And now, instead of being the father, He's the caretaker. How welcome was Jesus for Joseph? We don't really know, but you can only imagine that having the path he had so carefully planned ripped up could not have been easy. Maybe indeed wasn't welcome. So here's the funny thing about these signs from God. You can almost always guarantee that when you see a sign from God, your life is going to be disrupted. You can almost guarantee that you will go places you do not want to go and you will be doing things you do not want to do. Maybe little things. Maybe gigantic things. (coughs) But when there is a sign from God and you see it and you heed it, your life will not be the same. That's one of the reasons why we just as soon not see those signs from God. Because we've got our own paths. We just want to plow ahead. You stay locked up in church, God. But here's something else about that sign. That sign of the coming Christ. The one who is Emmanuel. Which means God with us. That in the midst of whatever God is having us do, there's no promise that things will be easy or calm or tidy. But there is always the promise that God will be with us. 
And when we follow that sign, when we trust that God is with us, when we get out of the driver's seat, let go of some of the control, then God says, I will do great things with you. And you will be part of the job of bringing about the kingdom of heaven. That's what this season of Advent is about. The signs that we see all about us of the coming Christ. The Christ who guides us, who saves us, who, who reconciles us with God. And who allows us to see the other signs all about us. So the next time you come to church and you see somebody in your pew, think of them as one of those signs from God and welcome them. Amen. Amen.